In my previous video, I showed you how to root the DJI FPV goggles and install a mod that lets you get the full Betaflight OSD in the goggles, menu and everything, finally. But that wasn't the killer feature that some of you were waiting for. I don't know how that wasn't the killer feature you were waiting for. Isn't that the killer feature you were waiting for? No. Some of you were really excited about the ability to transmit audio from the air unit into an earpiece in your goggles. There's a plugin out there that does that. Personally, I really like the plugin that auto starts recording as soon as you get a signal. Not when you arm, but as soon as you get a signal. And there's a plugin that lets you go from 25 to 30 megabits per second, or from 50 to 60 megabits per second, and more bitrate is better, right? Well, may maybe not. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install those plugins, and no, it's not as simple as just install them from the WTFOS configurator. They've been removed from the configurator, and there's a workaround. That's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. So here we are at the FPV WTF homepage. Uh, I do wanna note that you, right now I am at testing.fpv.wtf. Literally tomorrow, this is gonna to change to fpv.wtf and the testing.fpv. You won't need to do that anymore. So if you're watching this video tomorrow, you should probably go to just fpv.wtf. And uh, of course I have rooted my goggles and installed WTFOS. And if you haven't done that, then you are gonna need to watch my other video, which is linked down in the video description, but we're gonna assume you've done that. Then if I go to package manager, you'll see a list of the packages that WTF OS is making available. And those packages that we were talking about, the auto record, the audio, the 60 megabit per second are no longer available. The short version of the story is that they were removed uh, due to some licensing issues. I, I don't really know the details. The devs are working on recreating these packages and making an official version available. And in uh, between days and weeks, that is expected to happen. But if you can't wait, there is a way to install them from the third party repos that are still available on the internet. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. The instructions for installing third party packages can be found at this page on the WTFOS GitHub Wiki. There's a link to that down in the video description. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna go into the WTFOS configurator and go to the CLI tab. And then we're gonna need to type this stuff in. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put it into Notepad and edit it to be how it needs to be. And then we can copy paste it into the screen. So I'm gonna take this text and I'm gonna copy it. And then here, I'm gonna paste it into my Notepad. And you can see here that this URL needs to be updated and this command here needs to be updated to match the name of the package that we're installing. What we're looking at here is the GitHub page for user Funnel D, who is the one who created the plugins that have been removed from the WTFOS configurator, the ones that we're going to install today. I do want to point out before we proceed that the FPV WTF team cannot provide support for these plugins. Uh, they are working on recreating an open source version of some of these plugins because obviously some of this is incredibly desirable. And since they have access to that source code and it's their own work, they will be able to support it. But if you install one of these plugins and something goes wrong, there's nothing they can really do about that. And I'm sure they would appreciate it if you didn't overwhelm the Discord with requests for support about these plugins and then have them get mad at me for making this video showing you how to do it. Fair enough. The first plugin we're going to look at today is the Enable Live Audio plugin. This is the one that gives you audio through the AV port of your goggles. There are a couple gotchas for this one, though. The first one is that it only works with the V1 goggles. If you have the V2 goggles, I don't know why, but there's a technical reason why it doesn't work. The second gotcha is that it only works with the full-size air unit. The Cadex Vista uh, or air unit light or whatever they're calling it these days, doesn't have a microphone on board and it doesn't work. So unfortunately, there's a relatively narrow set of people who are gonna be able to use this, but if you're one of them, you're gonna you potentially wanna install this. I also wanna point out that the repo says that it will not work simultaneously with the MSP OSD. That's the Betaflight OSD plugin because it requires the DJI glasses service to be enabled. I think, that that information is outdated. The DJI uh, Betaflight OSD plugin used to require you to switch back and forth between the DJI uh, menus and the Betaflight OSD. It no longer does that, 
It now just runs simultaneously, and I believe that the DJI Glasses service is enabled even when you're using MSP OSD. But if you're using MSP OSD and you can't get live audio to work, that may be why. If you've got the V2 goggles, don't even install this. It's not going to work. The Boost Bitrate plugin increases the bitrate from 25 to 30 megabits per second and from 50 to 60 megabits per second. And this might sound like a good thing because more bits bitrate results in better image quality, but it's not free. And I want you to know that there are some definite downsides to using this. Um, the bit rate, the bit, where do that extra five megabits per second or 10 megabits per second come from? Well, DJI was using that bit rate to do some housekeeping things that make the link work better. So when you install this one, you are potentially gonna see greater latency spikes, less penetration, and worse performance. Um, so don't just install this and think it's a free five or 10 megabits per second. Test it out, see if it works for you, and if you notice latency spikes or less penetration, you may want to get rid of it. And then finally, my favorite one is the auto start recording. Uh, this one starts recording whenever you get signal from an air unit or a Vista, and it makes total sense to me that it should have always worked this way from the beginning. DJI has the ability to automatically start recording when you arm and stop when you disarm, but that's silly. I guess a downside is it can increase temperature, like running the DVR makes the thing overheat faster. So maybe that's why they only started when you arm because the props are spinning. But I've been running this, I love it, and I haven't noticed any problems with it. So let's use auto start recording as an example and show the install process. And this is gonna be the same for all of the others, uh, but we're gonna do this one because it's the one that I actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. What you're gonna do is go to the releases page for the uh, one that you want to install and look for the IPK file here in the releases. Auto start recording 014 pigeon glasses.ipk. I'm going to right click and copy link address for that IPK file. Then I'm going to go here into my text file where I'm modifying this uh, command line and I'm going to replace this URL with that one. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to paste this in. So now it reads we'll get and then this. Then I'm gonna take just the last part of this URL, the auto start recording 014 pigeon glasses.ipk, everything after this slash, and I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna replace that here where it says dollar sign name.ipk, I'm gonna replace that with this. And this is what we're gonna to need to put into the command line to make this work. So we're gonna start copying these lines over into the CLI tab. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. The devs recommend that instead of using the slash black box folder, that you use the slash TMP folder. The reason for this is that the TMP folder will automatically be cleaned up after a reboot of the goggles and that iPackage file won't be sitting around taking up storage space on your drive. Looking good. I'm gonna do them one by one just in case anything goes wrong. You could probably copy them all at once, but okay. This, this happened before. Well, this happened the last time I tried to do this, and I'm not sure what went wrong. Is it the HTTPS? It's the HTTPS. That's it. Uh, we need to change this HTTPS to an HTTP, and I bet it will work. Oh, <laughs> um, I've already, I've actually already done this one time, so the file is already there, uh, but it would have worked there. Uh, great, and then. <laughs> What we need to type is OPKG install, yada, yada, yada. I bet I'm going to get an error message here because it's also already installed, but let's just do it. It is up to date and already installed. That is what you need to do. You have now installed this plugin and it should be working. What if you want to get rid of it? Um, let's just see what the options are for the OPKG uh, command. There's got to be, if there's an OPKJ installed, there's got to be an uninstall, right? Actually, it's much simpler than that. You don't need to go to the command line at all, although you certainly can if you like that sort of thing. Instead, you can go to the package manager and where it says repo, change it to all, and where it says packages, change it to installed. And then you can see the third party repos here, the auto start recording is there, even though it's not officially supported, the WTFOS configurator can tell that it's been installed on the goggles and you can easily remove it simply by hitting the remove button here. If you subsequently wanna reinstall it, you will need to go through those installation steps again. Let me just reiterate before we wrap up that if you decide to go this route, 
this is not officially supported by the WTFOS team. They have graciously put on the wiki instructions for how to do this so that people like me and maybe you can decide to try to follow it. But they are busy working on more great new features, bug fixes and so forth for the configurator. The whole reason they made the WTFOS configurator was so that you could install packages without having to go through this nonsense. So if you try to do this and you run into trouble, please don't overwhelm them with support requests over on the Discord. They're busy enough as it is. If you want to email me, I'll do my best to help you. And if you like, you accidentally got a typo in here or something, I'll help straighten it out for you, hopefully. As always, you're welcome to email me with, with support requests of any kind about your quadcopters. That's what I do all day, and I'm happy to do it. My email is joshuabardwell at gmail.com if you didn't know that. Yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.